this is Animad, and welcome back to the Muppet Vlog! Now this time we're going to be looking into the 12th episode of the 3rd season of The Muppet Show, which features the one and only James Coco. Now for those of you who are not familiar with James Coco, he is actually known as a character actor whom in the 60s started out on Broadway, but then later would move on to television and film. Uh, some of his standout performance includes Man of La Mancha, which he was nominated for Golden Globe. He was also in the TV show Saint Elsewhere, in which he actually won an Emmy for Best, uh, for Best Supporting Actor. And he was also in Only When I Laugh, in which he was nominated for a Golden Globe and an Oscar for Best Supporting Actor. Oddly enough though, he was also nominated for Worst Supporting Actor at the Golden Raspberry Awards for that same role. So this is actually the only or one of the extremely rare instances where someone actually got nominated both for an Oscar and a Razzie for the exact same role. Now, going into the episode of The Muppet Show in which he has appeared in, um, I will have to say it was quite interesting. It's hard to really explain it. I wouldn't necessarily say it's one of the best, but it was rather interesting. Now the thing is, is that it started out with an idea of a plot where Sam the Eagle pretty much has had it and he decided he wanted to go and quit. But then he decided to stay to check out Rolf's performance with um, with a song called Eight Little Notes, which is kind of like this cute little kids song tribute to Beethoven. But then immediately afterwards, that was just dropped off, period. Um, the real plot would actually step in a little bit later, kind of like in the second half of the story, where James Frank, uh, James, why, why do I want to say James Franco? Where James Coco wants to talk with Kermit regarding how the show is going, how there's a lot of razzle dazzle, and how it's very quick paced and he enjoys it. But with the sketches that are coming, he's not really enjoying those moments. Like when the Swedish chef would come in, or when Wayne would step in, or when veterinarians would come, uh, he would actually step in, and he would actually step in, and he's like, Oh, good God, it needs improvements. So that's why he would go in and he would add some moments like uh, like just quick pace Mexican mariachi dancers or he would bring in showgirls during veterinarian's hospital. And like you got all these random shenanigans happening and it was kind of weird per se. Like it, the, the, uh, I will admit, the moment with the Swedish chef, it actually did work out. Like that was actually pretty good and it knows how to use its material, but with the Veterinarian's Hospital, it kind of came out the same thing. It's still Veterinarian's Hospital regardless, and it, the best way to describe it is just like how Kermit says it. It's just, you know, it's just a little sketch with bad jokes, and that's it. And even though he would bring it, like, um, James Coco would bring in the dancers, uh, they, like, Rolf, Janice, and, or well, Janice, uh, either way, uh, and Miss Piggy would still find ways to use the dancers as a bad, you know, to tell their bad jokes, so it's still kind of the same thing. Uh, at the same time, there are some other sketches that do happen as well, uh, most of which actually do consist of Robin, where, um, in the middle of it, we see, like, Robin scared to go to bed because he's scared of snakes, and then... He thought about, like, this little psychedelic dance routine with snakes uh, flo floating around. And then at the beginning, which is probably the highlight of the episode, is, like, this big elaborate setup where it's all underwater themed and they're all singing to Octopus's Garden by the Beatles. And the entire set, I must say, say, like, the entire setup, because everything is so big, like, you got an entire school of fish, and then, like, you got an entire band going on. I, I would say it's very reminiscent. It, it reminds me a lot of Bedno uh, bed knobs and Broomsticks, in a way. Where you kind of have, like, this entire theme of, like, kind of this, like, this ball or this party going on uh, underwater with all the fishes, uh, you know, just playing their instruments and just dancing along. And it's actually a lot of fun. And 
uh, the technicality that requires the, in this is actually pretty good as well, where uh, you actually see characters like Robin, the fishes, Animal makes a, a special appearance, and Kermit all just singing uh, Octopus's Garden while they're floating underwater. It's actually a pretty cool effect, so if anything, uh, that song was actually really well executed. Uh, at the same time, there is one more James... Uh, well, there are a couple more appearances with James Coco. Uh, first of which is a comedic bit in which uh, James Coco tries to be this medium to Fozzie Bear. And, like, they try to, like, perform this sketch, but then there's an interrupting ghost or, like, this hillbilly ghost that was, like, not part of the sketch, so they didn't know what to do with it. And then finally, we got the, uh, uh, like, the, your typical uh, guest act where uh, James Coco would come in and he would sing Short People. And that was actually a nice number as well. So I would say overall with this episode, it, it was oddly set up, I must say. Like, there were ideas in there, they were not all well executed. Like, there are some times when, like, it has an idea but it quickly drops it off like Sam quitting the Muppet Show or like they would have like this little idea but they want to like, drag it for so long like like it's fine if they want to do one sketch with, uh, with with the entire thing about bringing in the Razzle Dazzle onto the Muppet Show and like if they left it with just the Swedish Chef that would have been great but dragging it on to a few more different numbers going on, it, you know, it feels like it's stretching it. And you can tell in this episode they they don't really have a lot of ideas, so they want to exact, you know, they they want to exaggerate it. They want to pull more into it. So it doesn't come out as one of the best episodes. In fact, I would probably say it is one of the weaker episodes. It does have its funny moments, and there are some, you know, there are some nice. Uh, you know, Muppet moments as well. Octopus's Garden uh, is a great standout performance. It definitely was, at, at the very least, uh, a highly memorable moment of the season, but it, it's not enough to really make the entire episode itself memorable. So overall, like, I, I guess there are a few bits and pieces that you can go check it out online, but for the entire episode itself, uh, maybe you could skip it, but not necessarily the best episode that they've offered, that's for sure. But anyways, that is pretty much going to be it for this episode of the Muppet Vlog, so I just want to say thank you guys so much for watching, and hopefully there will be a bit of an order and maybe a full-on story that they can carry through and know what to do with it onto the next episode, but we'll only know until then, so see you later, dudes!